Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Final Whistle. Myself, Pila Peterot, I'll be your host for this evening. Straight into it, gentlemen. What are your guys' thoughts, I mean, in terms of uh, the Curry Cup final? I mean, anyone can jump in here. Uh, look, I mean, the game itself, I must, must be honest, was very entertaining yeah. uh, for a final. Um, I know there was talk about the numbers that actually turned out in Newlands. I don't know if that was a matter of not selling tickets or it was really hot. I mean, Cape Town was really hot over that weekend. Yeah. So you saw that there were a lot of empty seats yeah. uh, where the sun was shining. So I don't know whether that's the reason or it's a matter of people not t- uh, turning up at the grounds. But I mean, you'd like to think it's uh, hopefully it's, 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 it's the latter. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's basically P- my take. Pila, I see you want to jump in here. Look, I think... It- Obviously, the Curry Cup has lost its its glamour and its glitz, uh, mm. especially this season. I mean, they've they've truncated the whole competition into six rounds, which doesn't really give uh, the teams enough leeway to try and get um, a full head of steam going into the playoffs. Um, but I think the game itself, and, and I agree with the goal, is that it wasn't as as great as as, as it, were, it could have been, um, especially for Providence. I think they they dominated the whole season, and yeah. then. You know, in those last two games in the playoff matches where they, they just scraped through against the Bulls in that semi-final and then obviously, uh, you know, lost to, lost to the Sharks in the final. It wasn't a great finish for them for the season, but it was a really outstanding season for Province. And mm. I think hats off to, to Robert Dupree and his Shark side. I mean, you never, give the, you never gave them uh, a chance to, a, to actually compete in that final against Western Province and an unbeaten Western Province yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. come down two Newlands and win the title in yeah. what was a repeat of last uh, last year's uh, yes 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 it's actually a really good, good feed. Do you, I want I want to I want you to come in here I mean last year province traveled to Durban they beat uh, they beat the Sharks Sharks traveled to Cape Town they beat Western Province that has been the write up with this fixture especially in the finals where the away team goes and robs the house yeah. in the final <laughs> yeah. and which is what they did I said on Twitter the other day, that I think the Sharks will rob the house and win at, at Newlands because yeah. of the way Province performed in that previous week against the Bulls. Oh, yeah. They choked, and they choked again. I mean, the, the Bulls could have won that game, and Manny Libok missed a kick. Yes. It could have been a Sharks Bulls, and, and the Sharks came in with nothing to lose. Yeah. And, they, and, and I understand it wasn't a bit, but I like those type of games where the players leave it on the field. I mean, there was not a lot of tries, not a lot of fair play. It was just a tight a scrimmage between the two teams yeah. and I enjoyed watching it and the best team won in the end which was the Sharks yeah. and, and they deserved to win I mean it looked like half the province team was not in the game yeah. because the, guy had been, the guys had been selected for the Springboks and half their brain was in, in London <laughs> and, and I yeah. mean there was a lot of mistakes guys for, a, for, a, for an end of season game yeah. we didn't expect so many mistakes in the game yeah. Someone said to me that I mean those two those, these two sides are well uh, uh, two coaches uh, um, planned very well for this game and it was basically a tussle between the two forward uh, the two forward packs yeah. throughout the game lineouts scrums rack time so what how do you guys see was it was it a tussle between the two between the two forward packs or I mean was it just a scrappy game it, it, it definitely was a tussle uh, and. Um the Sharks came out, 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 out on top. So yes, uh, Province dominated the scrum, mm. but uh, they were really dominating the lineouts. And then when it came to the racking in the morning, they were really bullied by the D- Dupree brothers yeah. and even Akka van der Merwe. Akka van der Merwe. Those were the ascendancy they got. And then it didn't help that second half, Kuni Ostesen came on the field and he just kept the bashing going too. Yeah. So I think they really bullied the, uh, the Province guys, call it in the racks in the malls. Yeah. And they spoiled a lot of Province lineups. So based on that, Province didn't really get a platform to attack from. Yeah. I, I thought even in the build-up in, in the week before that final, when I saw that sharp side and I saw that back row of Tyler Paul and the Dupree brothers, and yes, I thought Tyler Paul. It's, an, it's a man Massive uh, loose three, which yeah. which has the potential to really bully the, the Western Province pack. And on the day, they really did deliver. Uh, and I was I was really impressed with the Dupree brothers. I can I agree with with Ngo. They they also quite can really count themselves unlucky not to make the end of their squad for the Springboks. Mm, mm, um, mm. But it's you know it's, that's rugby, and you got to really accept those kind of things. Yeah. Now I mean Ngo, you mentioned something about um, the stadium attendance. I mean, I see in New Zealand as well with the Mitre 10 Cup, yeah. I mean, it was free entrance. 
but still they also could not uh, fill up uh, Eden Park. But guys, let's let's back. What's track. wrong with our the problem? The problem is that there's too much rugby. Our unions are signing deals like okay, we've cut down on Super Rugby, mm. and then we've got the June Tests, and then we've got the Tri Nations. Yeah. And and by the time rugby championship, right? the rugby championship, <laughs> it's, gone, it's gone through so many name changes. It's annoying. <laughs> and and what and, and Saru signs a sun deal to take two teams to the Pro 14, yeah. which weakens the Curry Cup, which is the Kings and the Cheetahs. Yeah. So that weakens the Curry Cup. So and even the quality of play is is, is even. If you remember, we had Vodacom Cup back in the day. Yes. yes. And and it's at Vodacom Cup level, but we've still we still churn out enough good players. For it to be watchable, yeah. one there's too much rugby right through the year, and it's almost in the beginning of summer, yeah. and it, it becomes a drag. I think people obviously have had enough, and and we need somehow because the Curry Cup is our key, uh, what is a flagship yeah, tournament? tournament. Mm. I don't think Saru cares about it. I don't think they want to keep it. The fact that they can sign a side deal to take two teams of the Pro 14, which means that the Curry Cup is basically uh, is just there. Are you insinuating that we might have most of our teams actually moving to Pro 14? That is what you hear. In, 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 in everywhere you go in the rugby, they talk about us because we're the, the, the time zones. We are closer to the European teams. And obviously, financially, the TV deals there. Apparently, it makes sense. We are different time zones to New Zealand. I mean, the traveling there. We spent four weeks in Super Rugby. All our teams and the New Zealand teams come here for only two weeks. Yeah. So we we actually and then the New Zealand people always bash the South African teams, saying they're weak. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the thing is now, Saru, there's, there's no other way. They have to go up north for for you know. Yeah, and I think also the 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 innovation that SA Rugby has tried to do. Uh, or bring in to, to the Curry Cup has, has actually done the worst to it and not, yeah. and not uh, sort of advance the, the, the level of excitement that draws the crowd in. You know, I but think six rounds, it's, it's, it's a good idea, mm, but I, mm. I don't think that it, it, it excites the crowds. There's nothing that says, come watch, come to Newlands, come to Ellis Park, come to Kings Park. But I, sh- I mean, for me, I, I think oh, it's, it's, there's, it's, there's, there's also the factor of, I mean, there's guys... Th- before or last year or the year before, 2016 and 17, kind of brought about this dip into our Curry Cup uh, uh, tournament. In terms of, we, you remember when they pulled back all uh, the spring of players, yeah. and then all of a sudden now you have second grade, if I may call it that, not not uh, yeah, but not but discrediting. I mean the, the the talent that we have out there, but like second grade players playing throughout a tournament yeah. that is our flagship tournament of rugby in the country. So, I mean, they tried now to bring back all the Springbok players, but still it didn't have that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I think, I mean, they, uh, a lot of the guys were rested, and I mean, I'm in favor of resting some of the guys, because on the one end, yes, we want them to play, but the other, we need to also protect them and keep our eye on the prize being, being the Rugby World Cup. And then just going back to this factor now, uh, just around, call it bums on seats. I mean, I don't know then if it's also a matter of, I mean, we're looking at the, at the playing side, the game side, yeah. but you probably also need to look at the financials in terms of how much it's costing people to actually go to the stadiums. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And, and ticket, um, prices. ticket prices, that kind of thing, to, re- to really understand what's actually keeping people away. It's surprising for me that we, uh, we didn't fill up Newlands. Okay, really surprising. I mean, I'm, I'd actually still like to understand what was affected to that, whether it was the heat or they actually just didn't sell enough tickets. I think they only had a capacity crowd of 28,000. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on Saturday, we had two big games yeah. in South African sports. We had the Derby, yeah. Paris Chiefs, we had the Curry Cup, and they were both playing at the same time. Uh, that, that, you, you know who's at fault for that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is at fault for that? Multi-choice. <laughs> it's multi-choice who's at fault for that. Because, I mean, if you have two big games on a Saturday, you can't have... A, f- a filled out uh, Newland yeah. because you know where, pe- where, where people's loyalties are going to be. Yeah, but who, who, who broadcast schedules. those games? Who schedules those games? The thing is, obviously, the numbers went to the soccer, obviously, yeah. especially as viewership. Viewership was about the soccer, I mean, and then the numbers for rugby are dwindling down. Yeah. You know? so, so, look, we can go on and on about it, but we've still got the Curry Cup. It was still a fair game. Of rugby, I mean, the, if you look at the players, how they celebrated after the game, because it shows it means a lot. It's the Curry Cup, and you're beating one of your greatest rivals, yeah. 
which is Western Province of the Shark. This rivalry has been going on for the last 10 years, on and off. So, so it's still there. There's still something there that we can work on. Yeah. But obviously the administrators need to also help us yeah. with this regard. I mean, it's an administrative thing mm -hmm. where you don't have a lot of people. All right.